Hi, my name is Ed Hubs, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a tank that I just got through painting. This is the top of a tank to a um, Harley Night Rod. And what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to do this entire process. Now, a lot of you have been asking me where do I buy my supplies, which I say every time, coastairbrush.com. For everybody overseas that says they can't get what I use in my videos, you can. Go to Coast Airbrush. You can find everything I use. Um, I use all Iwata airbrushes. Um, they're a huge sponsor of me, and I appreciate them very much. Now, um, I have a lot of people asking me, how much do I charge for my work? Okay, well, cat's out of the bag. I charge $400 to do this. The owner brought me the um, black top of the um, tank here, this black piece. I color sanded with 600, and then I took and scotch fried the edges with gray scotch fried. From that point, I took and laid out my design. As you can see off to the side over here, I have a skull that I typed in on a Google search, found a human skull, and then I found a scorpion. Those were the two things that the um, owner wanted on the bike, so I airbrushed those on, and then I did a red glow around it because his wife wanted red, so we kind of tied it in with the reddish orange on the Harley Davidson on the side of the tank, so it all kind of goes together. Um, it's taken me six hours to do this. Well, it will by the time I'm said and done. I'm going to still clear coat this here in a minute, and then I'm going to color sand and buff it. I got approximately $50 in materials on this. If you had to buy all the materials, because you have to buy it, um, like say for example, clear you have to buy in course, depending on what clear you buy, of course you're going to have a little bit more. But I didn't use a full quart. I'm going to use maybe a half a pint of clear on this. So when you break it down, I got about $50 worth of materials in this. And again, six hours. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the entire process, how I got it to this point, and uh, hope you guys enjoy this. This is a little bit closer view of what I'm doing. I airbrushed, or I actually typed in uh, human skulls and came up with this on um, a Google search. And then I also typed in scorpions, came up with these. And then I placed them where I want. Now what I'm going to do is draw this on another piece of white paper so you can actually see the whole what design. What I'm doing right now is laying it out to see exactly where I want it to go. And then I'm just putting markings so I can place it back exactly where I want it. But from this point, I'm going to put a piece of transfer paper over top of this so I can draw all this out. So now I have my markings. And now I'll put a piece of transfer paper over top of this, and then I'll draw the design out onto this Well, you piece. are right. I did not use transfer tape. I used regular inch and a half tape, because when I put the transfer paper over top of it, it just wrinkled everywhere. So I went back doing it the old school way, like I used to do it. With uh, used to use two inch tape, but inch and a half tape actually works a lot better. You just lay it out. I've used carbon paper, put this up here, took my picture, laid it back into where I had my markings, traced it on. Now I'm just going back over with a um, marker and making the lines a lot darker so I know where to cut them. Now I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut all this out. And I'll pull out the skull parts first and I'm going to use kind of a bone color, uh, an ivory color. And I'll do all the, uh, the skull and then we'll go to the scorpions. This is the color that I just mixed up. This is more towards the color I want. And you can see it's got a little more yellow into it. And I added a couple drops of orange also. There we go. Now when I'm spraying, I'm not covering up all my other lines. I'm just lightly spraying this in until I get it covered. Then I got my reference photo back behind me and I'll start using that and I'll start detailing it. And you can see by doing a soft layer of this color and then going in and making it brighter, it makes everything else stand out. So now you can use this as your shadow color. Cool way of creating bone texture is by taking your airbrush and holding it at one. Um, okay, let's just start this all over. Taking your airbrush, spraying out a pattern about like this, and then just taking it and going like this. So 
Same thing, we're going up in here and I'm going to do the same thing as what I got on my uh, reference photo here. Now I just took the same mixture and added a little bit of white and just doing a couple little highlights here and there. Now I'm going back in with uh, root beer brown and uh, black mixed together so it makes a nice shadow. I don't want to um, use straight black because we're on a black panel. So as you can see this gives it a little bit of a brown cast. I'll go like underneath the um, pinchers here. creating a shadow we're creating a shadow where the uh, um, legs go across Well, I worked on it a couple hours last night. It's the next morning now, and uh, I'm going to start taking and putting all the pieces back in. We've already did the uh, skull, so now we'll start doing the scorpion. And it's very critical to make sure all these pieces get put back in exactly the right place. Just take your time, pieces in. Well, we've moved on to the scorpion, and we're basically doing the same thing. We're just pulling each piece out, spraying in my white right now I'm going to add red um, after I get all the white done because he wants red on the scorpions now I'm spraying white right up against the yellow line nice and heavy blending it out making sure that I get uh, white up against each part of the yellow here so when I pull this off you'll be able to see the, the um, complete scorpion even though we're not reusing these pieces always keep them just in case you have a mistake or you see something you want to add you can go back and stick the pieces in